And on Monday, January 22nd, we are back, baby. It's the Woo! 359 Woo! episode 342, <laughs> yeah! and it is so good to be back. How are you guys feeling? Great. Amazing. I've been in New York for just uh, two days now. I'm feeling like I'm back in the groove. That's right. Welcome back. I miss back. the city, man. Mm-hmm. It's been six weeks. I've been gone for six weeks. Holy Ooh. cow. I know. We I, didn't miss you. Uh, uh, <laughs> well, there's that 359 dynamic I miss. That's a lie. We missed you very much, <laughs> as did everybody joining us here. Uh, hopefully, we're going to see some of the regulars back. Sorry we had to take such a long, weird hiatus, but uh, scheduling I mean, is scheduling. We had CES, and then we had the Detroit show last week, and... Really, we're just getting our equipment back to mm-hmm. actually do this. So. Literally this morning, I had to put Literally the encoder back together. That's why we're running a little bit late. We actually had to put everything back together. Not we, Brian. No. We do nothing. Ben and I literally just sit here. I'm just a talking head. Yeah. If that, at times, right? <laughs> just talking You're just shoulders. a pretty face, Ben. Well, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> That's sweet of you. All right. All right. I'll take it. Starting the new year with the, a new, brighter attitude. The new year on the in the middle of the 20s of January, well, mind you. Well, it's the first time I've stepped in the office. For me, it feels like the new year. Touche. All right. So uh, we're going to be talking about uh, two hot topics. We're going to be talking about the Samsung Galaxy S9. Our colleague, Jessica Dolcourt, uh, scoured through CS trying to find the coolest tech. Uh, I came up with this nice wish list of things we want to see in the next flagship phone from Samsung. And then next up, the big story of the day, an inside look at the Amazon Go store. This is that fully automated store. Our colleague Shar Tipkin got to check it out, but Ben worked with Shar on the story. He's able to, to kind of run through the store, what it's like, um, why we should care. Mm-hmm. Um, so with that, let's, let's get it going. As usual, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. Brian will pick out the best, and we will try to get the, get to them in three minutes and fifty nine seconds. From three, two. Welcome to the three fifty nine. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. The Samsung Galaxy S nine is expected to make its debut late in February at Mobile World Congress, but we've already got a wish list of features that we want to see on the phone. Uh, it's actually not our list. Jessica Dolcourt hunted down the coolest tech at CES uh, and came up with a, a nice roundup of the best stuff that we want to see in Samsung's next flagship phone. Uh, first up, it's a personal uh, favorite of mine, something I want to see, uh, in-display fingerprint sensor. Mm-hmm. Now, well, You've been ahead. using Face ID for a while now, right? I yes. mean, like, isn't it It's relatively easy, right? It's not that hard to use? No, Face ID works relatively well. I mean, there are some errors every once in a while, but uh, I do miss having a, a fingerprint sensor in the front. Now, Samsung also... When they moved to this all-display design, put their fingerprint sensor in the back in probably the most awkward position possible. Yeah, it's a little weird. Right next to the camera. I'm, I'm still not used to it, uh, but it's nice to have it. I for agree sure. with you that having a, a actual physical fingerprint sensor is better for me anyway. But, mm-hmm. you know, Apple moving to Face ID, it does make you wonder if they are ever going to do another fingerprint sensor for, sure. for that flagship. I mean, there are situations where I would like to just unlock the phone on the desk, you know, without like staring at it mm-hmm. so I can see what's what's going on on my phone. Um, and in those situations, like having an actual fingerprint sensor embedded underneath the display uh, is handy. And as, as Vivo, this Chinese phone maker has shown that it's definitely possible. They're coming out with one. Uh, you know, Synaptics has said that more phones are going to come out with this technology. So, At least on the Android side, I think we're going to see some of this technology show up. Yeah, so another uh, element that Jessica talked about, which I really like, but I don't think it's actually going to happen in phones, are uh, the physical shutter that you have. We saw (laughs) these with the Google Assistant smart displays at CES. You can physically turn off or you can physically uh, prevent the uh, video from working, the selfie cam. So I think I, it's, it would be hard to like embed that into yeah. a phone. But I think size-wise, these phones are so small, having another physical switch to or shutter, even something as small as a shutter for one of these self, uh, front-facing cameras, it takes away from the real estate that they could be jamming in more components, more circuitry. More battery power. More battery power. And I'm just, yeah. And especially with an iPhone, I mean... I don't know. Face I've been, ID, I mean, that kind of disables face ID. It's, I've been watching too many Black Mirror episodes. I would like the physical <laughs> shutter. I want to know that there's no way that it could be. Oh, they'll they'll get know. around it. X-ray, something. <laughs> something. Who knows? Uh, and then I mean, lastly, the bendable screens uh, that we saw with LG, with mm-hmm. televisions. Uh, we, obviously, we want to see that show up in Samsung phones. Unlikely to be shown at uh, Galaxy S9. I mean, all the rumors point to the, the S9 being kind of a more uh, incremental update mm-hmm. to the, the S8, but uh, can't 
help but to hope that you know the the bendable screen technology does make its way it's to these coming phones. it's coming we've been talking about it for years and it looks like um the the tech companies are getting closer and closer yep. to actually having bendable and foldable screens so look out for that maybe not quite yet but soon so next up amazon's fully automated store amazon go has finally launched our colleague shara tipkin got a chance to check it out and ben you worked with her on the story just first off what is amazon go it's basically a cashierless store. You walk in, you you scan your phone at a turnstile, you mm-hmm. walk in, you pick up whatever you want, and the store recognizes and notices what it is that you're picking up, and then you could just leave. And you does, don't have to talk to a cashier. You don't have to talk to a person if you don't want to. I guess that's what I'm curious about. Like, how does that work? Like, How does it know that you're picking up a certain object, and what if you put it back down, what if you pick up multiple objects? Like, How, do you, how are you not constantly trying to fool that camera? Uh, they have a ton of cameras around the store at, that are constantly tracking your your entity, your mm. your body movements, everything like that. Even if it's a bustling, very busy store, and uh, this is something that Amazon worked for five years on. So there's there's a reason that it took this long because it's a really complicated problem. And speaking of which, it was delayed, right? They actually set the goal to launch by middle last year yep, and early 2017 and we're in 2018 it's just launching now yeah it's a little disappointing they didn't really provide much of an explanation as to why it was delayed everything that we were hearing was that they had glitches but they just said that they had so much enthusiasm from amazon employees <laughs> that they just held off until now and lastly are we going to see this anywhere else this is right now amazon go is just at the headquarters right they're saying they're laser focused specifically on this store but I would expect other retailers to start to get a little nervous, and maybe we'll see more of this type of technology start cropping up in the next couple of years. All right. For these stories and more, check us out on CNET. I'm Roger Chang. I'm Ben Fox Rubin. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> I love that thing. Thanks for that. <laughs> it's so great. This, uh, the Amazon store, just to clarify, this is only in Seattle right now, right? Yes. This is yes. like right at the, the Amazon headquarters. In the, yeah. And it's in open the for the first time today. To the public. It's been open to Amazon employees for like basically the past year. And from talking to like Amazon employees, they seem to love it. You walk in, you grab your lunch items, you get a pasta salad, you get a wrap, and you walk out. You don't have to like wait in line or anything. I like this idea. I I hate people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is great for for people that hate other people. I mean, and we see it now at the like uh, drugstores, they have those self checkout uh, kiosks. They never really work that yeah, they well. Always right. There's so always a annoying. human standing by for exactly. when it inevitably fails. Exactly. You know, you, not only for failures, but those self checkouts are also hotbeds of shoplifting. Oh, there yeah. are it's easy so many them. ways to so game easy it. to trick them. Yeah, you yeah. can you can pick up two items. I mean, I'm not going to tell people how to shoplift, but anyway, there are a lot of ways. <laughs> to shoplift using the self-checkout. So there's good reason to switch out and not use that technology anymore. I am really looking forward to when they open up one of these Amazon stores in Detroit and they can employ RoboCop as mm-hmm. security. <laughs> it would be great. <laughs> I you would get blasted. Like full circle, you know, <laughs> fully automated. I'm so fully I, automated. I am intrigued by this idea that it tracks your entity as opposed to Yeah, they're to like really vague you about or your phone. Oh, it's, do you think they're all got the Alexa uh, armed toilets? In the, in the store, in the that store. would be fantastic, Ooh, yeah. right? That's we that's, saw those at CES. Yeah. That's a toilet you know that never, you can flush with your voice. We never even checked. We never asked Shar if there was a restroom there. Uh, if there a, was like a place that you could just like run off, there's like a, there's a restroom, but only for robots. <laughs> yeah, so, that's right. So, so just get an oil it's change. Yeah, exactly. Oil. You're not gonna be there for very long. That's you know. true. You you're, you're on the go. Like, <laughs> like, well, I need to go, no. so I've got to go to the Amazon Go store. The only Sorry. reason any store has restrooms is because you're inevitably stuck behind that lady who insists on paying with a check, and mm-hmm. you can't wait that long. Never yeah. again. No. Never again. Thanks to Amazon Go, but it's really. As talking about the self-checkout kiosks, that's like one of the only checkout technologies that's really existed for a long time. Now we have mobile payments, but yeah. I use mobile payments, especially with um, this uh, fingerprint sensor. It's janky. It doesn't work most of the time or right, it doesn't work right. half of the time. So something like Amazon Go will be really valuable and useful for customers. And it's worth mentioning there is a lot of hand-wringing about what does this mean for jobs? What does right, this mean for totally. automation? Is this going to put cashiers out of work eventually it's hard to say so we got some fun stuff going on in the chat right now welcome back uh some of our our loyalists who have yeah. stuck out the uh the ugly last month with us enjoy josh etc and hello to some new fans and friends um first up uh, i want to Stringjoy wants us to play a game remember the uh the oh, whole boy. uh 
Okay. Like Mary F. Kill game. Yeah, oh, of God. course. Okay. So uh, I hope I don't get fired. Yeah. Let's uh, implement kill don't care for Pokemon Go, Android Go, Amazon Go. Implement, implement. kill don't care. I don't care about Pokemon yeah, Go Yeah, same anymore. here. Implement. What were the other two? Sorry. Amazon Go and Android Go. What is Android, Android Go? Go? What the hell is Android Go? As usual, Stringjoy knows more I about know. technology than we do. Well done. Well, so enjoy to... the show is yours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we've we've no by you. the by the magical powers oh, of Oh, Android tech. Go. It's the it's a stripped down version of Android for entry level phones. Oh. Um so well, that's, I would that's deploy really Android Go and then Amazon Go was the last one. Don't kill. Or don't kill. be friends with it. No, you gotta <laughs> take it out to the movies. Kill, implement, or don't care. Uh oh, all that's right, tough. why don't I kill Pokemon Go? Yep, yep. I don't care about Amazon Go. Oh, no, I don't care Android about Go. Android Go. Because it's not in our it's Yeah, it's not in our yeah. region. And then deploy Android Go. Because I would agree I, with I don't that. Want, I don't want lines. I hate lines. <laughs> Nobody likes them. Yeah. Good. That was a fun game. We should play that again sometime. Yeah, uh, except we actually have to figure out the technology that right. by our, the, our viewers actually mentioned. So. By the way, it's also uh, worth mentioning that like one of the longer lines that most people have to go through is a grocery store line. And... Amazon is like very vocal about the fact that they're not going to bring this to their Whole Foods stores. I know that's kind of disappointing. It's because it's like those stores are much bigger. They've got yeah, way more way stuff. More complicated. It's not a convenience store. Amazon yeah. Go is a convenience store. It's less than two thousand square feet. It's yeah. a little bit easier to manage. Right. The grocery store, we're just not quite there yet. That the volume that you tend to walk away with at a grocery store, it'd be the the self checkout all over again. Yeah. yeah. Plus, it's like there's all the produce that doesn't have barcodes on it or anything. How are you supposed to know if it's like a Gala Apple or a Pink Lady? A, Fuji. Or a Fuji. Sure. You know, all or that Red stuff. Delicious. Yeah. Eventually, I think we could get there, but I don't think image recognition is It's all about machine learning, man. Good. It's all about machine learning. Just use the words machine learning. Yeah. I'm just we'll going to solve say, everything. Exactly. <laughs> I don't know how it's actually going to happen, but if I just say it enough, it'll happen. Deep learning algorithms. There you go. Shout out to the Datch in the chat. And uh, Datch. Datch. let's take a comment from Josh Boyd. He says, I don't get why people want folding phones so badly. You guys mm. seem more excited about this than I do. I'm totally excited. I, I totally want to see folding phones. Uh, mostly because it's it's about display real estate, right? Like the idea of it actually being able to fold out to a larger display, you sort of see it with the Axon M, except it's got that kind of unsightly hinge in the Who middle right that? now. ZTE makes that phone. Okay. So that came out last year. I, I, I see it as sort of like the very, very early rudimentary start to this trend, uh, the idea of foldable phones. But if you can get a screen that's bendable, that is – that is actually whole and it folds down to a much more pocketable size, but it folds back out to a larger display when you need it. That's that's cool. I mean, that's different. We've I feel like the phone industry has gotten kind of boring the last couple of years. Aside from, it's been very similar, yeah. Yeah, it's been very We've similar. A lot of into the same minor pattern. updates, and I feel like 2019 or 2018 might be similar, a year where a lot of the big phones only see minor updates. So it would be kind of cool to see something radical and different and, and innovative in this industry. That's why I'm excited about it. I agree with you. The last point, especially that um, it, it would just from a philosophical basis as a tech reporter, it would be something totally different and interesting to write about. But if it doesn't actually provide customers with something different that they really want, then yeah. it's not going to take off because like there is a reason why all the phones look very similar now. It's because it works right. and, and people are comfortable and used to it. So the, the, the uh, one of the ZT executives who was showing off the Axon M, showing off one of the new apps. Um, the phone, I don't know if you know, has two screens that fold into one, but the two screens are folded out. When you fold the phone down, there's one screen on one side, and then the other side there's another I screen. I hate this idea. No, no, no. <laughs> the worst idea. This was this was a great this was a great app that he showed me. And there's me, advertising on the back yes, of exactly. your phone. Exactly. No, no. Um, the app that he showed me was great. Like on, on one side, the the one you're looking at is the camera viewfinder. On the other side, is like this little cartoon or whatever, and get your kid to watch the screen. Because one of the troubles I have is having my kid stare at the screen so I could take a photo of him. Oh. But it displays cartoons and little things to grab your kid's attention. He stares up at the screen. You know what else works? the camera. <laughs> uh, no, actually, it doesn't work that well. It's not very high tech. It's, yeah, my kid, my kid's pretty, he's already kind of discerning about his visual stimuli. So like, but that's he's such a jingling, specific... it's not going to be. That is a really specific usage. Well, the, the point I was trying to make was the phone that that Axon M, which isn't really a foldable phone, um, uses it, it kind of runs on the same principle. And he's trying to get developers to start thinking about how to create apps that take advantage of two screens like that. Mm. Uh, and you know, there are other ones where you're playing games or you're 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 teaching uh, 
you've got two screens there, you're teaching uh, someone how to play piano, mm-hmm. right? There's two piano uh, keys on each display. You play one, the other one runs through the same thing for a second person. I, I respect what they're trying to do, but I don't really see much use for that second outward facing screen, but we'll see. We'll see. I mean, I think that's the thing. Like we don't, we don't really know what those killer apps are yet, but I think the fact that people are starting to think about it is a good sign. I just, I, wanna... I just like the piece of paper phone. You've been reading about it in technology or in sci-fi for a, a long that, time. Like, literally rolls up. Like a yeah. Or just, you fold it like a piece of paper, you put it in your pocket, yeah. You, yeah, yeah. you know, like that's eventually what, I don't think we're going to have that anytime soon, but I that's kind of cool. I was in that pitch meeting. You know, you, isn't it really terrible when you drop your phone on face down and it shatters the screen? Hear me out. Let's put more glass on the back. <laughs> Let's put more <laughs> screen to shatter. Yeah. Well, I'm assuming Corning will get the whole grill glass thing down and they'll be super indestructible. No, I guess. We'll sure. See. Sure. Why not? Hey, let's engage with the audience a little bit because yeah. we are running out of time. Let's do it. Uh, Sir Enjoy, uh, on the theme of uh, the S9 wish list, yes. uh, is Synaptic's fingerprint sensor applicable on every type of OLED screen like AMOLED, POLED, et cetera? Uh, I, I, I would need to double check on that, but I, I think it's supposed to be underneath the screen, so I don't think glass type actually matters as much, um, at least... Because the actual fingerprint sensor, the way it it's supposed uh, it to be works, able to, it's light based. Yeah, so it's supposed so to be able to go through. Transparent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Doesn't matter what type. I possibly. think so. I wonder if refraction might them, have an effect on it. I don't know how that works. I, I, I know Qualcomm, if not um, Synaptics, was were working on um, in-screen fingerprint sensors that they were using could like work. radio waves or something. Yeah, right? so you could do it under metal or or yeah. other things yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So it didn't even just have to be glass. It didn't have to be transparent. So. Um, that just provides other potential uses for different right. uh, phone makers. And uh, one more from Josh Boyda. Won't bending a display wear it out over time? Good question. Ooh, that's a great question. We I don't, don't have that. enough of them yeah, to know that. Yeah, I don't really know. I mean, I think the bigger problem is less the display and more everything underneath the display. Like, how do you get the battery to bend? How do you get the chip, the, the processor, all the components in, underneath? Like, how does that all fold, mm-hmm. right? Or do you have it on one side and does it, the other side sort of a thinner thinner sheet that bends over. I don't know. It's really, uh, I think there are a lot of definitely practical hurdles that these companies have to figure out before this is a reality. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, we can keep dreaming. Uh, a little <laughs> off topic, but Scott Mayette's got a good question. Multiple news reports today in the UK saying that there is a leak from KGI that says Apple will stop production on the iPhone 10 this summer due to poor sales. No Watson is way. doubling into that question. Any expansion on that? Okay, I wish I had I heard I about that, that before note. the podcast. I know. KGI definitely is, a, is a known quantity. Record. Yeah. Yeah. I can't imagine them stopping production on the phone. I mean, that just seems... Okay, so Watson then wants you to answer if there's going to be iPhone 10 Plus. I mean, I think the rumors are calling What's for... more likely at this point? I mean, I think it's going to be a little bit of. I think I don't think they're going to stop production. I think production is going to continue. I do think there is going to be some sort of iPhone 10 Plus or whatever they're going to call the next iPhone. It's going to look like this, but bigger. Mm-hmm. iPhone 10 2. There are a lot of yeah, 10 2s, 11. Isn't I. that just iPhone 12? <laughs> 10 just plus 10 one? plus two is iPhone 12. Right. Whatever. Whatever. I mean, I think there we are going to see a bigger version of this phone. I mean, that's what the rumors are pointing at. Um, I don't think they're going to stop production of this current phone though. It's, it's been a like, weird year for how the have iPhone. the sales been? I don't watch that. It's stuff. unclear that I mean we're gonna find out uh, in a couple of weeks when Apple reports earnings. Mm-hmm. But uh, I mean, all That's indications. Wasn't that in March? No, 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 no. It's, no, it's fairly soon. soon. Sooner? Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, but all indications are. I mean, it's done pretty well. It's. I mean, it, it sold well. I mean. I think there are varying reports about how well it's done, but it's it's not a flop by any means. We don't see, in, in their own quarterly reports, we don't see a breakdown of the right. specific phone models. So, But just the absolute numbers would give us some sort of indication. Totally. Right? It, it's, yeah, and it's also it's the fourth quarter is what they're going to report, and yeah. that's the holiday season, so that's you should big. expect very big numbers. But um, even even a bad quarter for Apple is something that most other phone makers would be super jealous of. Yeah. Right. So it's 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 going to be a big number, but it'll be hard to tell whether it's going to be iPhone 10 did really well or not because right. they don't break that out. We should look into it more though. So Scott says that the Daily Mail is reporting on it too. All right, okay. we'll definitely take a look. Yeah, at it. Yeah, thanks yeah, for thanks the, the heads up. On Thank that. you Appreciate for the it. scoop. Mm-hmm. I like that uh, Matthew Datcher says if I if OS X is named after big cats, maybe iPhones are going to start getting named after little cats. 
Oh, I like that. Oh, yeah. Pa- the Sabbies. Little, 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 little kittens. Oh, yeah. uh, the, the, Him- the Himalayan. The Himalayan. <laughs> this is a good idea. And we're off the rails. Hey, I think that's probably a good time to call yeah. it quits for the this first time. Nice, real... nice being back. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, for, thank for you for coming. all the warm welcome. Feels like and... a nice old comfy chair. Just mm-hmm. easing back into. That's right. Sorry. You that's guys have what we got to get on the budget for next season. Comfy a chairs. Comfy chair? Comfier chairs. Okay. I'm cool with that. Do These the chairs thing, are not that great. Do the whole thing from recliners. Anyways, Ooh. Ben Roger, it's nice to be back in the captain's chair here with you. Yeah. It's uh, It feels right. Yeah. Take <laughs> anyway, us home. Take us good. home. Good. All right. If you liked anything you saw or heard here, check us out on CNET. Our podcast is available on iTunes, TuneIn, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Feedburner, Google Play Music, Amazon Echo. It's not on SoundCloud. It's not on SoundCloud. You're sorry. right. You're, sorry. You're going from memory. I'm going from memory and I forget SoundCloud. No longer on SoundCloud. Sorry. It's okay. Sorry. It's you're back. You're back. <laughs> also seen it. Check us out on the Echo. It's cool. Thanks, everyone. We'll be back again tomorrow. Theoretically. <laughs>